Now I got to tell you my shower story. About a while ago, I got in the damn shower, and uh, when I first started filming out here, I forgot how dusty, dry, and fucked up it gets out here. Well, I didn't forget, and I just uh, came unprepared. So when I first came out here, you know, I bought me some uh, body soap, kind that you just squirt out of a little gimmick bottle, and I got a regular bar of soap. And when you get in this trailer, this big fancy high dollar trailer, I love it. I could live in this motherfucker as a single guy, because my wife ain't here, as a single guy, you don't need nothing more than this. I got a living room with a big ass TV on right now. I'm watching the Golden State Warriors beat the Cleveland Cavaliers. And it's got a little workstation over there. And there's your kitchen. I'm sitting at the damn uh, buffet. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting at the booth table, refrigerator, half bathroom. And there's a door outside. And then there's a back bedroom. And that's all you need for a guy, for one person. This motherfucker might be, I don't know, 300 square foot. If It might be less than that, 200 square feet. I don't know what the fuck it is. But it's big enough for me to live in if I didn't have a damn family and a couple of dogs. So I get in this shower. And as nice as this trailer is, in the shower, there ain't no damn soap dish to put your soap or a hook to uh, put all your shit. And the thing about it is, I didn't have nothing to begin with. All I had was that squirt bottle of soap and a bar of soap. And normally, because when I'm in the shower uh, at home in Marina Del Rey, and I, I'm not dirty as fuck, I just squirt the soap in my hands and wash my body with my hands because I'm a guy. And I had stopped using a scrubber and a stick a while back just because I got tired of it. Well, out here, you've got to have something other than your hand to scrub with. Because, like I said, when the wind's blowing and it's so dusty, you get all this shit all over your shins and your calves and your legs. And all over your body, really, but really on your legs. So you got to have something other than your hand to put more pressure and for a better scrubbing surface, something that's rougher than the, the, the bottom of your hand. I got calluses and shit like that from working out. But you need something to scrub that dirt off. And I don't like to use rags because out here, I ain't got no time for no rags. You know, and if you, you, you use one, they get all fucked up and dirty and everything. So I went to the damn store and I was trying to find a body scrubber. But out here in Agua Dulce, they just got a really good grocery store. But they ain't no scrubbers. And they didn't have a disc scrubber either. And I was real surprised when they didn't have a disc scrubber. So I said, dude, you've got to have something to scrub your body. So I just bought a pack of regular sponges. And that's what I used for the first week. But a regular sponge, although it's better than my hand, it could be better. So the other day, when I was at the supermarket getting all my turkey and stuff for my wife to cook, I decided, man, I got to go down that gimmick aisle where I have all the good stuff for scrubbing. And what I what I got was, you know, like one of those scrunchy loofah things. Uh, you know, girls use them and guys do too, because I got one. But I got one that's dark forest green, so it looks fucking macho, kind of tough. Almost, it's like a, yeah, it's forest green. That's all the way I can explain it. And then I got this other thing. It's kind of like a rag, except it's pink. Now, I wanted a more tougher color than that, but that's all they had was pink. And it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a loofah rag or something like that. And uh, it, I haven't used it yet, but it's laying on the bottom of the uh, floor of the shower because I'm looking at the picture of it. And then I got uh, a mitt, a scrubbing mitt. Y'all seen like a like a mitten that you put on your hands when it's cold outside? It's like a glove with no fingers, except this is a mitt without a thumb hole. You stick your hand in the end of this thing, and then you use it to scrub your body. And then I got a badass scrubber on a stick, except this is just basically one of those loofah scrubbers like I just described in Forest Green, except it's attached to about an 18-inch stick. And that thing is premier, man. You talk about a good piece of wood. Man, I get that thing, and I squirt that soap on there, and I scrub my back all between my shoulder blades, and then I'm really able to just barely bend down and just scrub the fuck out of my shins and my calves and all that. So I'm real impressed with that damn loofah gimmick on a stick, and it's got a little leather uh, string tied onto the end of it if you were to hang it on a hook. Problem is, ain't no hook in this goddamn shower, so I got it all sitting there on the floor. Well, it's sitting on the floor now, but here's what happened. Uh, I was taking a shower earlier, and I got my Bose Bluetooth speaker in there, 
and I got it propped up on the towel rack so I can hear it pretty good. And I got my iPhone. Now, my iPhone has got about a five-foot charge cord, so I got it plugged in. I'm charging it, and I kind of got it resting on the, uh, the, the lid of the toilet because I closed the lid to the toilet. So it's within striking distance if I'm getting an important phone call or something like that. So I'm in there taking a shower, and a Michael Jackson song comes on uh, the Pandora radio because I was listening to Michael Jackson radio. So, man, all of a sudden, man, it's, it's beat it. If you remember that video from back in the day when Michael Jackson, he's one of the best dancers of all time. He's one of the best singers of all time. He's one of the greatest entertainers of all time. There's only one Michael Jackson. So, man, the song hits, you know, and I'm like, man, and here's the thing. At the time when I was in the shower, I was using that little glove and only got one glove. So I was thinking like, man, I'm just like Michael Jackson. I got I got this one little uh, scrubber glove on. And you remember Michael Jackson used to wear one glove. I said, man, this will be the ticket. I said, you know, diagonally across this shower from corner to corner, it's about three moonwalk steps. So I figured a Michael Jackson going on, I'm kind of grooving to the beat. And I was going to moonwalk from corner to corner. Now, reality is probably only about two moonwalk steps but I'm not very good at moonwalking anyway, so it doesn't need to be real far, and nobody can see me. And I was in Michael Jackson mode, and I was grooving in the shower, and I was all soaked up with my scrubber on my uh, my, my scrubber glove on my hand, and I, I I kicked up that damn foot and tried to arch up my foot, and I was gonna moonwalk across the shower. And when I did, I hit that motherfucking bar of soap, and when I hit that bar of soap, my leg went flying up in the air. My shoulder blades come down, one arm got pinned behind me, and the other damn leg got pinned up against the goddamn wall. And I was stuck. I was stuck in the goddamn shower, and this motherfucker's probably three and a half by three and a half. Water is beating down on my damn face, and I'm laying there with my arm trapped, my leg trapped, and I can't move but my right arm. Here's the thing. My right arm don't straighten out all the way. There's a goddamn fly just landing down. I was going to hit him with a fucking baseball cap. A fly landed on the towel that I'm trying to kill the flies with. So I was going to have to use my baseball cap to kill the fly on the fly swatter towel. So anyway, back to the story. Uh, I got my right arm. It don't straighten out. Ever since I had that tricep reattached, it got all that calcium in there. So this motherfucker, I'm thinking, man, because I'm, I'm starting to panic. Because when I first hit, the, just the impact jolted me. And I'm like, motherfucker. And I was mad because how could you do something so stupid to hear a Michael Jackson song and moonwalk across the shower and trip on a bar of soap and fall and bust your ass. Now your legs are tied up, your arms pinned behind you, and the door flew open, so water getting on the floor. So I reach up my goddamn old crooked ass right arm, and I was able to flip up the lever and turn the water off. Okay, now that's good. I'm in pain, but I got the water off. I'm not making a fucking mess. And now, you know, I'm thinking, okay, dude, you need to get your big ass up. But I'm starting to think about it, and I'm getting a little bit claustrophobic because I'm kind of jammed up. Uh, something ain't right. Uh, it's not a good position to be in. I think I'm intact. I don't feel like I've broken anything or dislocated anything, but I'm jammed up. I'm jimmied up in a three-and-a-half by three-and-a-half uh, foot shower. And I said, man, fucking 10 minutes goes by, and I'm, I'm about as independent and as strong as you can be, uh, but I'm starting to think, you know, dude, what the fuck are you going to do? So uh, I said, I looked over at my goddamn phone. I could barely crane my neck because the way my shoulders were hunched up and the way I was positioned at shower, I looked over, I said... You put that phone there, you got to reach that phone with your damn fucking bent ass right arm. And I fucking reached out the shower. I could barely touch that motherfucker with my goddamn middle finger. The middle finger that's flipped off crowds all over the world was the middle finger that I needed would to inch that goddamn iPhone off the lid of that commode into my fucking palm. And I jerked it and unplugged it. And I said, I got my phone in my hand. I said, well, who the fuck am I going to call? I said, I can call my goddamn wife. 
uh, who else am I going to call? I need help. I've fallen and I can't get up. And I'm in a goddamn shower. Naked. A global icon and a national treasure in a position of weakness. What the fuck am I going to do? Call my wife and tell her about it? Or call 911? So I called my wife. I said, God damn, you ain't going to fucking believe this. And she goes, well, I don't know what. Cause my wife always assumes the worst when I said, God damn, you ain't going to believe this. Because with me, it's always something fucked up. And I said, I fell in the goddamn shower and I'm fucking trapped. She goes, oh, Steve, how? And she said, the way she says that, it's like, like you must be one stupid motherfucker. Because how can a, a grown man, one of the baddest motherfuckers that ever walked planet Earth, fall, be trapped in a shower and incapacitated? And so... I told her about the glove and the Michael Jackson song, and then I hit the bar of soap trying to moonwalk, and she said, are you fucking kidding me? I said, no, I'm fucking serious as a heart attack. This is fucking straight up shoot. I'm trapped in the shower. She said, well, what do you want me to do, come get you? And I started thinking about it, and I'm like, well, what do you fucking do? I'm, I'm fucking 50-year-old man, fell in the shower, I'm trapped, I can't get up. But, you know, do I want my wife to drive 60 miles from Marina Del Rey to Agua Dulce and then to come in here and rescue me from the shower? And then uh, that being said, if she's able to maybe bring a, a, a crowbar or a fucking shoehorn or some KY jelly, whatever she needs to do, get my ass untrapped. You know, is she physically strong enough to do it? And do I want to put her through the trouble of loading up her, she and Mula, and Shona has to stay at the house because she don't like to get in cars and I said, you know what? I thought about calling the guy that drives the water truck out here because me and him turned into to, to be uh, friends when he comes out here. And I said, man, I, I said, I've known this dude for a while. We've been filming out here three seasons. I could call him. But I said, man, I'm kind of in a compromising position uh, being uh, in the way that I am. So maybe I might need somebody to keep his shit on the down low and have some professional assistance. So I told my wife, I said, well, fuck, I guess I'm going to call 911. And she goes, oh, Steve, you can't call 911. I said, well, what the fuck am I going to do? I said, I'm trapped in the shower. I said, my legs are going numb. My goddamn neck's hurting me. And now it's getting hard to swallow because I'm just all fucked up. And I, I can't, my, my other arm is trapped up behind me. It's the goddamn thing you ever saw in this straight up shoot. So I said, I got to call 911. I said, I'll call you back. And so I, I said, uh, I called 911, and the, the dude said, all right, 911 emergency, how can I help you? I said, I've fallen and I can't get up. And he says, is this some kind of joke? I said, no, nope. I sound just like a commercial, but it's a straight up shoot. I'm in a, uh, I'm in a camper. I'm out here on a location. I tripped in the shower, and I fell, and I'm jammed up against the walls, and my legs are trapped underneath me. One of my arms is trapped underneath me, and I can't get up. And he, the dude said, well, how did you fall in the shower? And I said, dude, I just fell because I'm not going to sit there and explain to the dude that I got one glove on like Michael Jackson. I'm going to moonwalk and I slipped on a bar of soap. Because just, he's not going to believe me. He's going to think I'm ribbing and he's not going to come help me out. And I just said, dude, it's a long story. This is a legit call. I for a shoot fell in the shower. And he goes, someone shot at you? Sir, is there, is there gunfire over there? And I, I said, no, there ain't no gunfire over there, dude. I'm just talking to wrestler talk. Uh uh, this is for real. I really fell in the shower. And this is where being coming from the wrestling world can sometimes work against you when you try to use wrestling lingo and when you say for a shoot. Because for a shoot means, really, this is true. This really happened. So I can't say for a shoot because he thinks shots fired. And he's not going to come or send an ambulance or the paramedics if shots have been fired. They'll send the cops. I don't need the cops. I need somebody to pull my big ass up and get me out of the shower. And so anyway, he says, okay, well, what's your name? I said, hey, Arthur. And he said, uh, sir, I didn't understand your name. And I kind of mumbled it because I didn't really want my name out there on the wire. And I said, hey, Arthur. And uh, he said, sir, can you spell that for me? And I said, okay. I said, S-T-E-V-E-A-U-S-T-I-N. He goes, oh, Steve Austin. I said, yeah, Steve Austin. He goes, why didn't you say that the first time? I said, because I was trying to kayfabe this whole motherfucker. He says, who's kayfabe? I said, man, forget about it. I said, I, I, just forget I ever said kayfabe, okay? And uh, he goes, no, who's kayfabe? Is she there? Can she help you? I said, man, she, my name is Steve Austin. 
I'm a global icon and a national treasure. I'm in a bad way. I can't feel my legs, can't feel my arm, and uh, I'm real claustrophobic, and I'm in a bad way, and I'm in pain. And can you send somebody out here to get me out of the shower? And uh, he said, yes, I can, Mr. Austin. So I said, okay. He said, where you at? I said, I'm over here at the movie ranch in Agua Dulce, and if you come in the location and you hang a ride, I said, my trailer's up there. And just come on in because I ain't got the door locked. And uh, you'll see my uh, my vehicle out there. It's a black SUV, and I'm in there, and I'm in the shower in the back of the bedroom. So he goes, okay, Mr. Austin. I says, uh, I have help on the way. And I said, all right. And uh, I said, am I supposed to stay on the phone and uh, just talk with you and, and uh, let you know what's going on? He goes, well, you can if you want to, but if you feel like you're okay, I've got other calls I can take care of and, and help people out. I said, no, no, no. I said, I'm good. If, if you're sending guys down, I said, what are you sending? Uh, I said, he goes, do you need an ambulance or, or uh, what do you need? I said, man, I just need somebody to help get my ass out of the shower. And so he says, I'm going to send a fire truck. And I said, well... I said, yeah, man, dude, I'm a fireman. They're badass motherfuckers. I said, they picked my big ass up. And so I said, okay. I said, send a fire truck down here because I don't think uh, I broke any bones or anything. Uh, but I do have one other problem. Uh, I, I am in a little bit more pain than I alluded to. And he said, what are you talking about? He said, well, when I fell in the shower, I had other things lying around. And I had a scrubber and a stick leaning in the corner. And when I fell... I fell on a scrubber and a stick. He goes, what do you mean scrubber on a stick? I said, you know, like them little loofah things that you like uh, you rub your back on uh, to clean your back off when you're getting soapy? He goes, oh, yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. I said, yeah. I said, when I fell, I landed on that. And he goes, well, what do you mean you landed on it? I said, I'm trying to kind of keep this on the down low. My name is Steve Austin, and I can't kayfabe anything with you. And he goes, hold it, who's kayfabe? And I said, forget about it, goddammit. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to shoot with you. Here goes, he goes, shots fired. I said, no, I know shots fired. He goes, well, tell me what's going on. Who's kayfabe and were there shots fired? I said, kayfabe don't exist anymore. Ain't no shots fired. I fell on a goddamn scrubber on a stick and stuck it straight up my ass. I need someone to get me out of the shower, pull this scrubber on a stick out of my ass so I can record an award-winning podcast put on podcast1.com in iTunes for people to download for free. Motherfucker, I need help. Can you please send the fireman? Ain't got nobody, got no guns over here. Everything's on the straight up. He goes, all right. He goes, you got a scrubber on a stick shoved up your ass? I said, yeah, it ain't something I like to brag about, but yes, sir, I do. He said, can you describe the scrubber on a stick? I said, yeah, it's about 18 inches long. Uh, the end of it is aqua uh, marine blue, and on the other end of it is a leather loop where you can hang it on a shower hook with. And he says, uh, how far do you think it's up your ass? I said, I don't know. I can't see my ass right now from the position that I'm in. I just know that it's stuck up my ass and I'm in pain. He said, hang on, brother. The fireman's on the way. And I said, hallelujah. I said, fucking thank you. And said, I said, you know what? Since you've got other things to do, you go ahead. I'm going to hang up the phone and I'll wait on the fire truck. <sighs> so I'm waiting there in the shower. I call my wife back because I know she loves me. She's very concerned. And I got to give her the truth. And I said, uh, I said, Kristen, I said, you know, I just called uh, the 911. And the guy's got the, the fire truck on the way. He goes, hold on, we got the fire truck. What are you sending the fire truck for? I said, well, I mean, it was between them and the paramedics. And I said, I don't think I'm really hurt. I just fell in the shower and I got, I wasn't going to tell you this, but I got a scrub on a stick shoved up my ass. And uh, she goes, how in the world did that happen? I said, I can't get into that right now. It was a freak accident. And uh, trying to moonwalk and Michael Jackson and all this other stuff. And it just, uh, if anything could go wrong today, it, it did go wrong. And I got a scrubber and a stick up my ass. And I got to get these guys to get me out of the shower and pull a stick out of my ass. And so I said, I said, baby, I got to go tell the dogs that, that daddy loves them. And that he's going to be home real soon. And daddy's not going to be home real soon. I got some more days at work out here. But it just sounded good to make my wife calm down. Because I knew how worried she was about me. And so all of a sudden in the distance, I can hear the sirens coming up the road, sirens getting closer, sirens very, very loud. And all of a sudden I hear, a, I'm in here, come on in. I said, I'm in here, come on in. Guy, hear the door open, Mr. Austin, are you in here? I said, yeah, I'm back here in the shower. And all of a sudden, man, 
I'm stuck in that shower and I crane my neck around and I look. Hey, it's me. I'm right here. All of a sudden, the fireman, his name was Joe. I come to find out later. Joe says, God damn. He says, how did you get in that position, sir? I said, it's a long story. Uh, I was listening to Michael Jackson. I tried to moonwalk at a bar of soap, fell down, shoved this uh, scrubber on a stick up my ass and bent my legs up behind me. As you can see, I can't move my arm either over here. He goes, ooh. He said, can you describe this scrubber on a stick? I said, yeah, it's about 18 inches long. It's got an aqua blue marine scrubber on one end and it's got a leather loop tied to the end of it to hang on a shower hook. He says, it looks pretty bad. And he says, I said, what do you mean it looks pretty bad? Uh, he says, well, I can see the leather loop, but not much else. How long did you say that the scrubber on a stick was? I said, I estimated it to be about 18 inches long. He says, we might have a problem here. I said, Joe, just get you guys in here. I don't care whether you got to get the jaws of life or whatever you have to do to destroy this camper. I don't care if you get a chainsaw and you cut the wall out. You got to get me out of here. I said, I'm a global icon and a national treasure, and I can't have this making TMZ and have other people find out about it. It goes against my modicum of toughness. It goes against the body of work that I put together in the WWF, and it goes against everything that I stand for, running the Broken Skull Challenge for the baddest, most uh, toughest athletes in America to come out here to the proving ground. If they find out that I fell in the shower trying to moonwalk to Michael Jackson and got a scrubber and a stick shoved up my ass, and they're going to make fun of me, and they're not going to believe that this really happened. And I said, Joe, I said, you got to help me, brother. you got to help me. And he says, it's a fucking straight-up shoot. He goes, do you mind if I take a picture first? I said, no, man. I said, you can't take no goddamn picture, man. I said, fucking just get me out of here. I said, all right, come on in here, guys. And it was like a swig of water for the working man. You ever seen like a Three Stooges when one of them looked around the corner and then one of them put the head on top of the other and the other put the head on top of the other? I had four heads craned around the door looking at my stupid ass laying there all bent up. Oh, everybody to listen to this podcast of beer. I'm trying to tell you guys a fucking true story about me in a 911 situation. And my niece just sent me a text saying that she loved me. I'm going to text her back saying that I love her back. So there I am laying in the shower, legs all discombobulated, fucked up, my arms felt fucked up, still got my phone in my hand. And uh, I said, guys, you got to get me out of here and we got to keep this on the down low. And so I said, okay, Mr. Austin, we got you. So they started grabbing hold of my various body parts and started trying to extricate me. But it was almost like, you know, I was figure forward in that shower somehow. Uh, and I think I dislocated my, my left shoulder to a degree. And I think my, my left knee was popped out because there's no way that I could fit in the shower like I was all fucked up. And I was stuck. And it took them several minutes. And uh, finally, they was able to fucking free my left arm. And that was cool. But now my legs are still tangled up. And I got this stick up my ass. And so finally, they pulled me by the armpits and grabbed me under the armpits. So here's what they did. They put a towel underneath each armpit. And each guy, you know, like you're dragging something. And that's how they, with two towels and one guy on each towel underneath the armpit. And I held my, my, my hands, my arms down at the side so they wouldn't flop up. And that's how, how they pulled me out of that shower and they pulled it, pow! And my shoulder shot back in the joint. And I was laying there on the goddamn floor. And I said, motherfucker, thank you. <sighs> I said, can you guys help me up? And I'm laying there naked as a fucking jaybird. Got four firemen out there. They got full fire gear on. Um, you know, they got the helmets and everything on. I said, goddamn guys, there ain't no fire here. You can take them jackets off. And uh, they said, well, we got you up. Uh, what, what do you want us to do for you now? I said, you ever make a fist and hold your thumb up and then you kind of point back at yourself like RVD used to do? Well, I did the RVD thing, and I said, guys, I said, you got to pull this scrubber on a stick out of my ass. And I said, oh, God damn, we forgot about that. And uh, they said, bend over. And this is a true story, and I'm embarrassed to talk about this, but I'm not in a position to 
pull a scrubber on a stick out of my ass uh, because it was wedged up there pretty good. And it was so far in, I think it kind of wedged between my maybe my short ribs, my gallbladder, and my spleen, and probably resting across the front side of my liver. I used to be a pro wrestler. I'm not really a biology specialist and know a whole lot about the insides of the human body. But it was wedged to get up against something and wedged up in there pretty good. And so the old boy says, well, I got a Leatherman here with a hook on it. And he was able to hook that damn leather loop that's on the end of that scrubber on a stick. And he started pulling. And that guy had a pretty good grip on that Leatherman tool. And uh, they got it out enough to grab a handful of that stick. And then uh, the dude started pulling and that scrubber on the stick wasn't moving. And he goes, do you mind if I get a little leverage? And I said, no, I'll do whatever you got to do. Well, I didn't know what he was talking about when he said, need a little extra leverage. And he put his foot on my ass to keep me from coming back towards him while he was pulling on that Leatherman tool to get that scrubber on a stick out of my ass. It was the most embarrassing thing I think I've ever done in the history of my life. And he said, boys, grab a hold. And when he said, boys, grab a hold, what they did was, he had a hold of that damn uh, six inches of that stick. The rest of that stick was shoved up my ass. And so he had a hold of it, and he had his boys get behind him, and, and one of them waist-locked him, and the other two waist-locked the other one. It was like a daisy chain, as we would say in pro wrestling. And all of a sudden, they did a countdown, and he said, one, two, three, pull! And they pulled like a motherfucker. And I kind of relaxed at the same time because I think I was clenched up from all the trauma and I was trapping that damn stick inside my ass. And I didn't know my ass muscles was goddamn strong. And that thing had a hold. That scrubber up there was wedged up against my spleen and my gallbladder and my liver. And I was able to relax. And finally, that scrubber on the stick just came flying out of my ass in the four firemen took a goddamn bump on the damn bedroom floor. So I looked at him. I said, thank you very much. Before you guys get up, do you mind if I take a picture? And uh, so anyway, fuck, they started laughing like a motherfucker. And they said, Mr. Austin, are you okay? Do you want to go in and see medical help and see if there's any internal hemorrhaging or bleeding? I said, guys, I said, I think I'm good to go. Uh, please uh, let me let me throw on a towel and uh, get you guys out of here. And they said, hey, man you mind if we take some pictures with you? I said, man, for everything that you did, if you keep this on the down low uh, and don't ever tell nobody, I'll take a picture with you guys. And so I put some underwear and some shorts on and put a tank top on and some flip-flops and went outside. And the, I had some beer in the refrigerator, and I gave him guys a beer. They wasn't supposed to drink a beer because they was on the job. But we drank a beer out there together and laughed like a motherfucker about what had just happened. And I said, guys, I said, please do not ever tell anybody about this story. And then one guy says, well, Steve, well, you got a podcast, don't you? I said, yeah, I got a podcast. Why? He goes, because I listen to it. I said, oh, dude. I said, you listen to the Family Friendly Show. He goes, no, I listen to both of them. I, I subscribe and download to both the shows. Uh, I said, yeah. And, uh, okay, I said, I appreciate you listening to the show. I said, uh, well, aren't you going to talk about this on your podcast? I said, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can talk about it on my podcast because nobody listens to the show. But if you guys spread the word, then everybody will know. And then uh, it'll be kind of an embarrassing situation. So anyway, those guys, uh, because they're so professional and they're, uh, I could not say, his finest, and I appreciate their help, uh, they promised not to tell anybody. And the only reason I'm telling this story to you guys here on the podcast is because I'm out here doing this story for the working man. And uh, I'm out here working my ass out myself. That's a straight-up shoot story. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. I recovered fully. I'm back on my feet. Uh, I tell you what, I'll probably have the cleanest farts in the world for about the next few six months. Because uh, when that scrubber on a stick came out, hallelujah, man. Uh, you know, all that soap and stuff really cleaned my insides out. I tell you what, I could uh, fart in front of the Pope right now and not even offend him because the smell would be so bubbly, sparkly, and shiny that it wouldn't bother him. And that's no disrespect to the Pope. I'm just saying if uh, I was able to go visit the Vatican and farted accidentally, never try to fart on purpose, but that wouldn't offend him because the, the, 
the fart, my farts have been cleansed. <laughs> With that being said, with that being said, folks, I'm coming right back. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to take a pause for the calls and answer your questions. That you send in the questions at steveaustinshow.com. 